Yo, man, why you get, only you got me up this early in the damn morning. Only you. That's how much I like your ass. I love your ass. I don't never get up this early in the morning, only because of you. All right, well, what are you going to do the rest of the day? Well, I'm going to sleep in until I, well, I wake up. Then oh, I'm okay. going to play golf all day. I got the day off. Well, now that you have a uh, a golf swing here, you're looking good. I'm getting better, brother. I'm no, getting better. I've worked hard. Shout out to my coach, Dan Early. I've worked hard. And I want some more of you, Dan. <laughs> but, you know, I want you. I Look, I remind people, I'm one of the last people who saw you play well. And that was in Dayton, Ohio, when you shot a 79. And you played well. And you should have retired there or stopped taking lessons. <laughs> you, hey, you know what? I'm just glad to be out playing, having fun again. Smoking me a couple of cigars, drinking a little bit. Hey, that's not, hey, there's only two things old people can do: golf and fish. And I love <laughs> both of them. All right, I got a question for you. I'll give you two PGA championships or one Masters. What would you rather have? Well, I think it'd probably be the Masters okay. uh, because you know it's just that's you know unless you're from overseas, where they think the Open Championship is the greatest thing ever. I think winning the Masters with the tradition and history, I think that I think that would be it. How about three PGA championships or one Masters? Well, I think three three kind of takes it to a whole nother level. So I'd go with three of those. Uh, but listen, winning one Masters, that's historical. Uh, two is different, but three, I think I'd go with three PGAs. How about an NBA championship or the Masters? Well, I think the Masters, personally, I mean, because, hey, they give out the NBA championship every year. And I know they do the Masters every year, but, like, nobody knows who won the championship five years ago in the NBA. <laughs> but, you know, to be able to host – I mean, think about that. I think that's such a great tradition. You know, you, you talk about places you want to be. Can you imagine being at the Masters dinner on Tuesday night with – only guys who won the match, and you get to pick out the menu, that would be one of the coolest things ever, Dan. I mean, I mean, think about that. You get to pick out the menu, and there's probably, I don't even know how many living Masters champions there are. It can't be more than 30. What would your menu be? Uh, probably fried chicken, <laughs> Uh, ham hocks, neck bones, chitlins, um, <laughs> some type of pecan uh, pecan pie, some collard greens. I'd go all, all – I mean, you know they ain't had no chitlins or ham hocks and neck bones there. I might even throw some pickers and pig feet in there to get them a little soul. When you go back to Alabama, do you got a restaurant, a go-to restaurant? I'll go to Fleming's every night when I'm in Alabama because I'm in a small town and we don't have any restaurants. So I have to drive to Birmingham. My hometown leads. We don't have any restaurants. Uh, so we, I drive, to, I spend every night when I'm in Alabama, I go to Fleming's. Uh, they, they just take good care of me there. And I take a couple of my homeboys and we have a great night. I saw that you uh, gave back to your school. You were giving out uh, $1,000 to employees at your high school. Well, you know, Dan, it's been a tough year. Um, it's been a tough year in, my, in the world. So shout out to anybody who lost somebody to COVID or lost their job. And, you know, and I, you know, I, I love teachers. I admire them. I respect them. And I want to do something nice for the teachers in my hometown. And uh, I thought it'd be nice to give them a little year-end bonus. I mean, because I know it's been crazy. I, I couldn't imagine. I, hey, it's so funny. I talked to all my friends who got kids. They found out doing this COVID situation that when their kids are home, their kids are a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're like, hey, they're like, yo, man, my kids are crazy. Having them at the house all day, I'm never going to say anything bad about teachers in my life. So I want to do, give a shout out to all the teachers out there because everybody realized during the pandemic, my kid is crazy as hell. <laughs> what were you like if I talked to one of your grade school teachers? What would they have said about you? Oh, I didn't start going crazy until 
probably my second or the third year in the NBA when I first got into this whole craziness. I was a really quiet, shy kid back in high school. But, you know, once you get in the limelight, man, it's a different animal. And, and first of all, I got in the limelight in Philadelphia. I tell people, there's nothing, can, can, there's, there's nothing that can prepare you for being famous. There's nothing in the world. And then to do it in Philadelphia is a whole nother animal. So uh, I, I was a good kid. I had great friends and great teachers. Miss Turk, Miss Hill, Miss Robinson. Love y'all. Miss Robinson passed away, but Miss Turk and Miss Hill were amazing. Uh, my coaches, Wallace Honeycutt and Billy Copeland, were amazing. You know, Dan, I always tell people, you know, I watch the news all the time. And you see how crazy it is in some of these big cities. Going to growing up in a small town with a couple of people, man, I think was a really great thing for me because I didn't know what I was missing. But I didn't have to worry about all that crime and all this craziness that's going around in the country that you see every day on television. But you said your second year, you had the spotlight on you. Like, how goofy did it get for you? It's something you can't even explain. You know, microphones in your face every day. Guys asking you questions that, you know, I'm trying, you're trying to learn. But are you, know, you talking about your social life? Like when you went out and, and you know, that you were, you were exposed to a big city. Yeah. And it was crazy. I, I tell you the story then. I think uh, at the beginning of my third year, I became a star and it was overwhelming. And this is how stupid I was. I, me and I got a guy, a bunch of me and my guys together. I said, yo, man. It's hard for people walking up to you all the time or autographs, take pictures. Let's go somewhere so I can get away and we can just be boys. And I had never been out of the country at that point. So I said, hey, let's go to Hawaii for a week. Nobody will know me in Hawaii. I'll get, <laughs> I'll get like, nobody going to know me. Man, it, it, that's how crazy it was. Because, like, when people come up, you want autographs and pictures all the time. When it first happens, it's a little overwhelming. But... I took like four of my friends. We went to Hawaii. I was like, yeah, nobody's going to know me in Hawaii. <laughs> and that was my first like, oh, yeah, being in the limelight is totally different. It's totally different than anything I'm ever going to experience. But I, I, I like, oh, man, this is going to be weird. They know me in Hawaii. It's crazy. Yeah, but imagine if you're Michael Jordan or Tiger Woods and, you know, or a, a big time actor or musician and you're traveling like you can't go anywhere. Well, you know what's interesting? Uh, I've been close with Michael and Tiger at, at some point. Out of all the celebrities I've ever met in my life and been around, Michael and Tiger are the only two that people absolutely lose their mind when they're around. Like, and, I, and listen, I've been around everybody, Dan, to a certain degree, but I will say this. Michael Jordan and Tiger Woods are the only two athletes I've ever been around where people absolutely lose their mind. When Michael was in his heyday and Tiger, and Tiger's always been Tiger, those are the, like, those are the only two guys I've ever been around. Like, people get excited when you're around other guys, but people absolutely, when Michael was in his heyday, people, and same thing with Tiger, people just stop and stare, and they think it's like, it, it was crazy back, it was, it was amazing and crazy. So thank God I've never been as big as either one of those guys. He's uh, Charles Barkley, the Hall of Famer. McLovin, give Charles the poll question today. Okay, the NBA one. Yeah. Okay, which player has the most pressure on him in this year's postseason? Uh, Luka Doncic, Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, or James Harden? Well, it's an easy question. It's either it's either it's James Harden, uh, the, the the Nets. Uh, and Kevin, the Nets got the most pressure of, of any team in the NBA. They have to win the championship, but their season's not a success. And I said you got to put in Paul George as well. Uh, that's a fair. That's a fair thing. Uh, but Giannis, Giannis has to. Uh, Giannis, and and I'm telling you something. Giannis, uh, Giannis, and James Harden and Paul George. Those three guys got the most pressure. I think that. Two of those guys got to get to the finals. I mean, listen, uh, uh, Paul George is an interesting case because I don't think people look at him like they look at Giannis or, J or, or, that, or that team they put together in Brooklyn. Paul does have some pressure, but 
like, man, the West is the craziest I've ever seen it. I have zero idea who's going to win the West. But in the East, it's easily Brooklyn and Milwaukee who are going to play in the second round of the playoffs. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's Brooklyn and Milwaukee. Both of those teams got to at least get to the finals or it's been a disappointing season. You were on ESPN yesterday with Mike Greenberg, and it sounded like if LeBron wins another title, you might elevate LeBron above Michael Jordan. You're open to that? I'm open to the discussion. Okay. You know, first of all, I think they got a lucky break having to play the Phoenix Suns. But if they can win three series, if if he beats the Phoenix, uh, they beat Denver, and then they beat the Clippers. The caveat, to be honest with uh, Dan, is going to be if if they can beat the big three in Brooklyn. Now, I'm on, I'm telling you, I'm picking Milwaukee to win the East. Mm. I, I love what they've done with Drew Holiday and P.J. Tucker. But if LeBron can get win three series on the road and beat the big three in Brooklyn. Now, if he beats Philadelphia or Milwaukee, but if he beats those three guys in Brooklyn, I would be open to the discussion that he is. I would elevate him past Kobe, and then I would listen to the argument that he's in the conversation with Michael Jordan. I think that's only fair because this, to me, is gonna. You know, he's been out basically all season. Anthony Davis has been out basically all season. If they can win three series on the road and beat the Brooklyn Nets, I'm I'm open to the conversation that he's on Michael Jordan's level. But you don't even have him on Kobe's level. I don't. I got Kobe a little bit ahead of LeBron, just a little bit. Hmm. Uh, I do. But, you know, it's so funny when you have these arguments. I, hey, listen, I'm not putting him ahead. Like when people be arguing, you're crazy, Charles Barkley. You're crazy. You got Kobe Bryant ahead of LeBron. I says, I don't have Papa Jones ahead of LeBron. I said, <laughs> Kobe Bryant is one of the best to ever do it. And I love Popeye, but I'm telling you, like, you know, he's in that conversation, but man, I don't think the Lakers are going to win the championship, but if they're able to win a championship this year, I think you got to at least be open to the conversation. We had Robert Ory on yesterday. And after he got a shout out from Rudy Tomjanovich at the Hall of Fame that he should be in the Hall of Fame, I asked Robert if he is a Hall of Famer. What do you think? You know, Dan, I, I don't answer those questions because I don't want to poo-poo on anybody. Robert is somebody I, I respect. He had a hell of a career. But, you know, I, I don't – I'm just glad, number one, C. Webb finally got in. He should have been in five years ago. Mm. But I think it's such a tough call to, to vote. I don't have a vote. But, man, that's a very interesting debate about Robert Ory. He's had a hell of a career. I know he won a lot of championships. But like I say, I'm glad I don't have to make that vote. Would you rather have Robert Ory's career or Carl Malone's? Carl Malone's. Carl Malone's easy Hall of Famer. He's on the dream team. Listen, hey, everybody wants to win. I want I wanted to win a championship. But you know, it's interesting how guys who get paid to talk about sports always want to badmouth guys like myself. Carl Malone, John Stockton, Patrick Ewing. You know, it's a, I, I don't know how it became a singular thing. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, it, nobody wins. Like, wait, why are y'all picking on, and I mean, picking is not the right word. Why are y'all picking on us? Like, we just didn't have teams that were good enough to win. So I don't understand how it switched from like, it's a team game. And then when you don't win, like, well, it was your fault? First of all, it's my, First of all, it's my fault we were even in it. We were we were on TV, <laughs> you know. Hey, we didn't listen. I'm not. I, I don't. And I don't. I don't want to throw shade at anybody. I'm saying, hey, we only showed the Utah Jazz because of John Stockton and Carl Malone. Let's get that out the way. We didn't show the Jazz because of Thurl Bailey and Byron Russell. <laughs> I mean, hey, 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 I love Sam Sabalos. But the reason we were on TV every week was because of me. It wasn't because of, it wasn't because of Sid Sabalos and the Gale Knight. You know, that. If you could change anything about that series against the Bulls in the finals, what, what would you change strategy-wise? Well, we had, you know, we had a six-point lead 
and we ran three plays for me. And I had to pass the ball three straight times. I, I, I lay around sometime and think like, man, I should have went through that double team. It's not a good basketball play. It's not a smart basketball play. But they made me pass the ball three times in a row, and we didn't score. And they scored seven straight points to beat us by one. Sometimes when I'm in my private moments, I'm like, I actually, it's so funny you asked me that question. I was like, okay. Because Horace Grant and Scott Pippen are the two best defenders. When they double you, there's no space because they're both lean and athletic. It's so hard to find actually a passing angle out of that double team. But sometimes when I'm in a room by myself, I think like, well, maybe if I had to do this, or, uh, but it's like I say, it's not a smart basketball play to try to go against a double team, especially those two guys. But that's the only thing I, I, I think about at times, Dan. Great question. And then don't leave John, John Paxson open. Well, okay. So, you know, it's interesting on the play because I had been studying, because I knew we were going to play the Bulls in the finals. The year I got traded to Phoenix, I told Cotton Fitzsimmons, I says, hey, we're going to play the Bulls in the finals. And I've been studying tape on them all year. So to play, because people said, Charles went for that steal. I went for the steal because I know nobody else on that team. It's only two guys on the team had the courage to shoot the ball. That was MJ and Paxson. Because you go back and look at the play, Scotty asked to have a layup, and Horace Grant had a layup, but they didn't want to shoot the ball. So the play was going to be, in my mind, I saw him run it. They were going to throw it to Scotty, and they were going to have Michael coming at us full speed. So I jumped the play. I jumped the play because I said, Scott is not going to shoot it. Nobody's going to shoot it. So I, th- I feel like I had time to get back in the play. But Scotty gave it to Horace. He didn't. He passed it. He, he could have took it to the basket. We would have tied, would have tied it up. Horace had a layup. It would have tied it up. And I said, okay. But I went to jump Michael because Michael was going to get it. It was going to be a handoff. So I jumped to play. And listen, uh, Danny shouldn't have left Paxson because if they had scored a two, it would have still been a tie game. But, hey, it is what it is, brother. But I had scouted that play for six months. That's, you know, just the detail is pretty amazing. Well, you know. I used to always look at the tape. And so when I got traded, I said, we're going to play the Bulls in the finals. And I said, I cannot. I said, we're going to play them. And I, I'm, I was very confident against them. Very confident. Because I know they couldn't match up with me. We couldn't match up with Michael. And it, I, I actually, I think the guy who played great that series, who never gave better was Scott Williams. We, he, he, he's the guy who really, in my, in my opinion, had a huge effect in that series. But it still came down to, to, to Michael against me. And I didn't – the only game I, – I, I didn't play – I played I didn't play good in one, but the rest of the series I played good. But uh, it was – I just couldn't make enough plays for us to win. Go back to bed. Thanks for joining us. Uh, great. I did, Dan. I told you, I, I, once you were up, you can't go back to bed. You told now me I'm you just- were going back to sleep and then you were going to wake up and play golf. I'm on practice, Dan. I'm only working on my game. Right Dan, why don't you come to Tahoe anymore, man? Well, listen, how about this? Well, I, I want to lose this. now. I, I I would crush you before. Now it might be competitive. Yeah, but why wouldn't you do your show from Tahoe that week? You got every job in the world. You can have anybody on your show you want. Lake Tahoe is the only place in the country where it's not going to be hot. You should do your show the whole week from Tahoe, and then let me kick your ass on the golf course. <laughs> All right, it's only May, so I got time. Well, man, hey, you know I got a lot of love for you, man. I'm so happy for all your success. Thanks for having me on.